tutorial on creating a basic ebook using the oh. open source WYSIWYGI editor for ebooks. It's very simple to use, even if you are a beginner, because the ebook pages are actually based on an XHTML format and you can even add CSS to your pages. If you have any experience with HTML, this will be very natural to you, but even if you don't, it's really easy to work through. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using Word. Close that. So as you can see, I don't have an actual manuscript and it's just a Word document that I have handy. And I'm not going to be using all of the pages either just for time restraint purposes. But what we need to do is clear the document of all of its formatting. So make sure you have a backup copy saved somewhere. So we are going to click on view, go down to styles, and in this little drop box here, we're going to select all. Then we're going to click it again and select clear formatting. So you can see that everything has been cleared of its formatting. And it's just a raw file, which is what we need to start with our ebook project. So open up Seagull so we can start a new project. There it is. So this is what Seagull looks like. It uh, may actually seem familiar to those of you who are coders out there. Um, it's got the design view, which is what automatically comes up, and it also has a split view and a code view for those of you who do know HTML, and if you do want to code it that way. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to start in the design view. And the thing you have to remember is that every chapter you create is actually going to be a separate file in Seagull. So for example, <clears throat> the first page that Seagull gives us is just called this basic section 0001.xhtml. So what we're actually going to do is pretend that this first page here is actually just my first chapter in my book. So I'm going to copy that and paste it directly into the design view in Seagull. So you can notice that there is a bit of formatting already that automatically gets uh, wrapped around the text and if you go to the code view you'll actually notice that every paragraph from the Word document has p tags wrapped around it which is good for us so that we don't need to uh, go into every single paragraph and format that ourselves. So going back to the design view, <coughs> I'm going to add a header here, call it chapter one. And I'm going to change the font size here. Actually, sorry, the heading size will make it a size two. And you don't need to rename it. If you want to, you can just right click, rename, change it to chapter one if you feel like. And we're going to do this for every single chapter that we have. So if you want to make another chapter, we're going to right click on the text folder, add blank section, and it automatically gives us a new page. And let's go to the second page in my Word doc here. Copy that. All right. Copy that. And paste that in here. And do the th same thing for the third page. So we'll add a new blank section. Grab our Word document there, scroll down to our last page, copy, and paste. And let's just save this in case something happens. So I'm just going to save it onto my desktop. You can save it to any folder you want, and I'm just going to call this SEO-workshop.
So now we're going to add another header and call this chapter 3 and change the size to an H2. I'm also going to add a subheader in here just so that it stands out a little bit more and give that a heading 3 size. And there as well. <clears throat> oh, forgot a heading here. So we'll add chapter 2 to that page. And we can also add website links in your ebook so that when you're reading them on a desktop, you can actually follow the link. <coughs> to do this, we're actually going to go into the code view. So. <clears throat> and around what we want to link, we're actually going to add some A tags. and then add the actual URL in there. So in this case it's basically the same text as what we're linking. Quotes, close it, and make sure we wrap it properly. So if you go back to your code or your design view, you'll notice that it's become a link. All right. Oh, looks like I put that in the wrong spot. We'll just cut that out. Put that up here. Okay. So now let's make a cover page. So you're going to right click on the text box, add a blank section and I'm actually using an image for my cover page and we need to add our image to the images folder so we're going to right click on the images folder add existing files browse through until you find your cover image that you want to use for your book and mine's just a screenshot of the first page of the document so we're going to open that up and you'll notice that it's been added to our folder so what we want to do to add this to our page is we're going to click on this portrait or sorry this landscape icon to insert an image and it automatically picks out the images that we currently have in our folder and right now we only have the one so it's only going to show that one click OK and there's my cover image what we also need to do is rename this. So right click rename, we'll call it cover, and we also need to add a semantics so that the program knows uh, what type of page it is. So it's our cover page so we're going to select have cover. And you want to make sure to drag that to the top of your list. There it goes. And I also want to add an acknowledgments page because I want to thank everybody involved with this book. So I'll just add a new blank section. And I'm just going to rename it now so I don't forget. Call it acknowledgments. <clears throat> and we'll just start typing. Change that to size 2. Whoops. There we go. Well. Okay, so that's our acknowledgments page. And again, we're going to have to add semantics to it just so that the program knows what page it's supposed to be. Next, we're going to make a title page. Now, you might be thinking, why do we need a co cover page and a title page? Aren't they basically the same thing? Well, sort of, except that when you're creating an ebook, 
uh, the cover will actually open up for a few seconds and then disappear and your title page is actually what stays for the viewer to look at. So in that case I'm going to make my cover page look exactly the same as my title page. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can make a little bit different if you want. So we're going to create, whoops, we're going to create a new blank section. I'm going to add the same image I had before. Rename your file to title page and add the semantics title page. There you are. And drag that just underneath your cover page. And you might also want to add your copyrights and your publishing information. So again, we'll add a new blank section. And I'm just going to put quick header here. Publish. Oh. There we are. Make this header a little bit bigger. H2. Rename the file. Call it copyrights. Again, you can call it whatever you want, but it's always best to call it something that's going to make sense to you later on. And add the semantics. Copyright page. And I'm going to drag that near the front because that's where I want it to appear. All right, so we're almost there. Next, we need to create a table of contents. So you're, you're gonna notice this window on the right here that says table of contents. All we need to do is click on generate table of contents from headings. There it is. So I don't want my publishing information to be included in the table of contents. You can if you'd like, but I personally don't want to, so I'm going to unclick that. And as you can see, it disappears. Same with these, with the smaller headers. I don't want that. I just want the chapters and there's an empty space here. I don't want that either. So there we have chapter one, two, three, and the acknowledgements and we're gonna hit okay. So just make sure you save everything. And the last thing you want to do is make sure you validate your EPUB file just for many errors before we actually check it out. And it looks like I've got a couple errors on line three here. On my content file. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we actually forgot a step here. We need to add some metadata, which is actually pretty important. So we're gonna go to the Edit tab and Meta Editor, and you're gonna give uh, your book a title, which is actually uh, pretty essential to a book if I don't say so myself. All right, I'm gonna call this SEO Workshop. And the author is Michael Bernardo, language English, and click OK. Now you can validate your uh, EPUB file. There we go, no problems. So at this point, we pretty much have our EPUB file. I'll just grab it from the desktop there. And you just want to view it with one of your desktop e-readers for now just to see what it looks like. So I've got Adobe Digital Editions here. So oh, I have to add it to my library. Add item to library. And search for it. Mm.
There we go. Click on that. Click add. And we're going to open that up. And there's our ebook. Just pull this in a little more. Alright, so we'll go down there. So there's publishing information, chapter 1, the rest of chapter 1, chapter 2, the rest of chapter 2, chapter 3, and the acknowledgements. And you can notice the uh, table of contents on the side here, so we can also jump to different chapters. So that's it for this tutorial on creating a basic ebook. Thanks.